Hey, look guys, I've got my own merch. <laughs> right, let's get started. Hey guys, today we are going to answer the question whether Creality hit the nail on the head with the Ender 3 version 2 machine. As it happened, I do have Ender 3 original machine, something that I've upgraded uh, beyond recognition. So for me, actually going to Creality Ender 3 version 2 wasn't that much of a jump. I already have a lot of features that that printer presents. Creality has been very successful with the original Ender 3, striking a perfect balance between features and the price. Now with the version 2, they offer even more, but is it enough to consider this an upgrade? Or should this printer be recommended not to existing Ender 3 users, but to people that are new to 3D printing? As my original 3D printer, hello there, it's just down there for the filming, it's upgraded, obviously the jump from that to Ender 3 version 2 wasn't that big. But looking back at original Ender 3 design, I quickly understood how much actually it improved over the original model. Now my favorite features on the new machines are much quieter stepper motors, 32-bit uh, motherboard. Now if you wonder why 32-bit matter, you probably won't notice this at first, but when you have a very complex geometry or longer print, you're definitely going to benefit from more stable prints. These are not the only improvements present on the motherboard. You'll quickly notice that there are available sockets for filament runout, uh, BL touch support and the motherboard allows you to actually resume the print after the power loss. Another thing is sturdy base, something that is not often mentioned. Now instead of 20 by 40 profile, the Y gantry is suspended on top of 40 by 40 extrusion profile, which makes it less susceptible to vibration, something that's gonna help you if you're experiencing ringing. The entire printer has a refreshed look and, in all honesty, it does look a little bit modern, especially the display. Now, at first, when I looked at the display, I really hoped that's going to be a touchscreen display, which would be great for that sort of interface that they are using. Unfortunately, it isn't, and you still have to navigate through the menu using this uh, slightly awkward knob. But it's not just the graphical interface that had been reorganized. If you notice, the power supply is now located at the back. There is a spare tray to store your items on the right hand side underneath the bed. And overall, printer looks slightly smaller despite having exactly the same footprint. Creality also took the feedback in consideration. They've improved the extrusion. The original part was really prone to wear down causing the filament eating into the extrusion part. But now this had been addressed with a metal insert that will prevent the filament from chipping into the extrusion cage. Another new feature that wasn't present on original Ender 3 are belt tensioner. They're quite useful and easy to actually tension the belt, but in all honesty, you're probably going to do it once and then forget about it for a long, long time. It also comes with a glass bed as standard and much faster prep time, which means that the Creality bed and the nozzle itself will heat up slightly faster than original. In my test, the new printer was able to beat my old, even though upgraded printer by two minutes. While V2 is a completely new machine, it's still Ender 3 at heart, and as such, shares the same parameters in terms of bed size and the print volume. This means that you should expect in theory very similar printing quality, so I took on the challenge and printed the same model three times on Ender 3, upgraded Ender 3 and Ender 3 V2 to see if I can notice any differences. As you could see, all three printers were capable of delivering pretty satisfying 3D prints. Now, upon closer inspection, I was able to tell which printer was which and what benefits I could gain from using different printers. Obviously, I was feeling most comfortable using my upgraded version of the Ender 3, and uh, in hindsight, I could probably print that figurine slightly faster. The model that came from the original Ender 3 required the most post-processing, the lines were slightly more pronounced even though I was using the same G code and the teeth were a mess, something I would have to fill later using wood filler. My upgraded Ender 3 and the Ender 3 V2 provided nearly identical results with a couple of differences around the teeth. Now that only shows that you can achieve pretty successful prints with a new machine comparable to an upgraded Ender 3. 
you know the strong points so let's talk about a couple of things that i'd like to see addressed as well even though i do appreciate a creality taking care of the filament eating into extrusion mechanism they could actually add the aluminum one it would solve the problem for good and it would leave much better impression Another thing is the display. I wish they upgraded it to a touch interface, especially that the menus and the overall graphical design of the menus just indicates that it's been made for a touch upgrade. So I hope I'm gonna see some touch upgrades options really, really soon because this is something I'll definitely buy. And it's 2020, the motherboard got updated and you can see that we went from mini USB to micro USB instead of USB type C. Why? Come on, it's not that expensive connector and it would make stuff easier. So let's answer the question from the beginning of this video. Who should really get that and the tree version 2? If the budget is strong consideration, you're probably going to benefit from V2 anyway, even though it's more expensive printer. This means that a really, really strong contender, original and the tree is going to be sold, well, for much lower price. I regularly seen it on sale on Banggood for about £130 and this is next to nothing considering how much you used to pay for 3D printing. So if the budget is tight and you really want to start with 3D printing and the tree still isn't a bad choice, then you can jump on the incremental path and buy the upgrades you want to bring that ender tree to a certain standard. You'll learn this way much more about 3D printing and you'll decide what your machine is going to be capable by picking appropriate hardware. But if you've got the budget and this is your first 3D printer, go for Creality Ender 3 version 2 instead. It's an overall better product and it will serve you well for a long time to come. And then once you understand what the 3D printing is all about and in which direction you would like to head with your upgrade, you're either going to end up buying a new printer anyway or start upgrades in the direction you desire. So what if you already own Ender 3? Should you really think about V2? That's really down to you. You can spend that money on upgrades and turn that printer into something that you really want, or you can actually get the second Ender V2, even though it won't come with improvements in terms of bed size or print volume, you'll have the unique ability to split your prints into two different printers and not wait ages for the results, which is something I'm currently benefiting from. In all honesty, you can't go with either of them. They are all really good printers considering the price and they are able to deliver satisfying prints to move your projects forward. So what's next? First, I'd like to thank Banggood for sending me the Ender 3 V2 for the review. In the description of the video, you will find a link to that particle printer, to Ender 3 as well, and a couple of upgrades that I already have coming to me and on the way, so I could talk more about how I am upgrading my printers and why I consider certain choices. So if you're interested in that, consider following me on social media so you could get notification whenever something is out. You obviously know how YouTube works, I am not going to teach you that, you're master of your own fate there. Thanks so much for watching guys, and as always, I'll see you next video. Take care, bye! You went from mini to micro. Your device is offline. Shush! Connect. Shush! From the top of your screen. Then go to Shush! Network. You just...